Ross Thompson was sitting in his brown leather armchair, a relic from the time when he was a successful photographer traveling the world. Now, he was looking at his son, Grant, who was engrossed in a video game, his eyes glued to the television screen. The boy was wearing a pair of turtle-framed glasses, but Ross noticed that Grant tilted his head forward and squinted to see better. Grant, are you seeing the game clearly? Ross asked, trying to hide his concern. Well, sort of, Dad. Sometimes it gets a bit blurry, Grant replied, not taking his eyes off the screen. Ross sighed. You're already on your third pair of glasses this year, son. Maybe it's time to take a break from TV and games, don't you think? Grant paused the game and looked at his father. But I like playing, Dad. It's fun. I know, I know, but your vision is getting worse, and I'm starting to worry, Ross said, getting up from the chair and walking over to his son. He crouched down to Grant's eye level. Remember when we went to the park and you couldn't read the signs from a distance? That's not normal for a boy your age. Grant looked down, clearly uncomfortable. I know, Dad. It's just that I don't want more new glasses. They look weird, and the other kids tease me. Ross felt a pain in his heart. He had initially suspected that excessive TV, video games, and screen time might be causing Grant's vision problems. But now, seeing his son's expression, he realized that it might be something more serious. Okay, let's make a deal, Ross proposed, trying to lighten the mood. I'll schedule an appointment with a specialist to see what's really going on, and if everything's fine, you can go back to your games. How about that? Grant smiled, relieved. Okay, Dad. Ross kissed Grant's forehead and stood up. But as he walked back to his chair, a sense of unease washed over him. He couldn't help but wonder if there was something deeper affecting his son's vision, something that not even a new pair of glasses could correct. Grant Thompson was immersed in his own world, a universe of pixels and adventures unfolding on the bright computer screen. At the age of nine, he was already a seasoned player in various online games, a skill that gave him a sense of accomplishment he rarely found in the real world. His father, Ross Thompson, stood at the bedroom door, watching his son with a mixture of concern and understanding. Grant's room was a sanctuary of isolation, adorned with posters of video game heroes and shelves filled with books and action figures. Grant, do you want to take a break and come to dinner? Ross asked, his voice gentle so as not to startle his son. Just one more level, Dad. I'm almost there, Grant replied, his nimble fingers skillfully maneuvering the controller. Ross entered the room and sat on the edge of the bed, looking at his son. I understand that you enjoy playing, but you also need balance, son. Grant paused the game and looked at his father, his eyes behind thick glasses meeting Ross's. I know, Dad. It's just that here, I can be whoever I want, do things I can't do out there. Ross sighed, thinking about how the absence of Jane, Grant's mother, had affected the boy. I understand, Grant. I really do. But you can't hide from the world forever. Your mother made that choice, and look where it left us. The atmosphere grew tense at the mention of Jane. She had distanced herself from the family shortly after Grant's birth, a decision that still cast a shadow over the Thompson household. Do you think she regrets it, Dad? Grant asked, his voice trembling slightly. Ross looked at his son, his eyes filled with the sadness he rarely displayed. I don't know, Grant. Some people make choices in life that they can't undo, but we have to live with the choices we make. And I chose to be here with you. Grant smiled a small and shy smile that lit up his face. I chose to be here too, Dad. Ross felt warmth in his heart, a small glimmer of hope amid the complexity of their lives. Then, let's have dinner, and afterward, you can finish your game. But remember, the world out there has a lot to offer too. Grant nodded and turned off the computer. Okay, Dad. 
As father and son left the room and walked toward the kitchen, Ross couldn't help but feel that, despite the absences and painful past, there was something valuable they shared, the choice to be there for each other, no matter what. Jane Williams was the epitome of beauty and success. Since her teenage years, she had conquered the European runways, becoming an internationally recognized model. Her face graced the covers of fashion magazines, and she was the darling of the most renowned designers. During one of her trips to Paris for a haute couture fashion show, she met Ross Thompson, a talented photographer covering the event. The chemistry between them was instant, and discovering that they were from the same city in the United States only intensified the connection. I've never met someone who understands me so well, Jane confessed to Ross one night as they walked the illuminated streets of Paris. The feeling is mutual, Ross replied, his eyes locking onto hers. It's like the universe aligned everything for us to meet. And so, amidst camera flashes and runway lights, they lived in overwhelming passion. But destiny had other plans. Within a few months, Jane discovered that she was pregnant. I'm pregnant, Ross, she said, her face pale, reflecting the seriousness of the situation. Ross looked at her, stunned but supportive. What do you want to do, Jane? I want to have this baby, she replied, but I'm afraid of what it might mean for my career. Ross embraced her, trying to convey his support. We'll face this together, Jane. Jane's career began to crumble as the pregnancy progressed. She lost contracts and runway shows, and the reality that her life was about to change drastically began to weigh on her. I can't do this, Ross, she said, tears in her eyes. I've worked too hard to get where I am. I, I think we should give the baby up for adoption. Ross looked at her incredulous. You can't be serious, Jane. This is our child. I know, but I'm not ready to be a mother. And you know how ruthless this industry can be, Jane argued. Ross felt a mix of anger and despair. If you don't want to be a mother, that's fine, but I'll be a father. I won't allow our child to be raised by strangers. And so, when Grant was born, Jane made the painful decision to leave her son and her old life behind. She returned to the runways and magazine covers, but at an emotional cost only she knew. Ross, on the other hand, embraced parenthood with all his being, determined to give Grant the love and stability that Jane couldn't offer. They had no further contact, each going their own way, but forever united by the child they shared. The love and passion that once brought them together were replaced by difficult choices and divergent paths, leaving both to wonder what could have been if circumstances were different. Ross Thompson looked at his dusty DSLR camera, stored in a closet. He remembered the days when he traveled the world, capturing breathtaking moments and landscapes. But all of that felt like a past life, a distant memory he had left behind for something much more important, his son, Grant. Are you sure you want to do this, Ross? His best friend, Mark, asked when Ross announced he was giving up his career as an international photographer. I've never been more certain of anything in my life, Ross replied, holding a photo of Grant in his hands. He needs me, and I need to be there for him. Ross hung up his lenses and tripods and traded them for a desk at a tech company in his hometown. The environment was monotonous, surrounded by gray walls and the constant hum of computers. But every time he looked at the photo of Grant on his desk, he knew he had made the right choice. Ross. Can you stay later today? We have a project that needs to be finished, his boss, Jennifer, said one Wednesday afternoon. Sure, no problem, Ross agreed, even though he knew it meant less time with Grant. I'll get this done before heading home. To supplement his income and keep a foot in the photography world, Ross started doing freelance work at weddings on weekends. He became the second photographer, capturing special moments, but always with the feeling that he was on the outside looking in. You still have the touch, Ross, Emily, a photographer he often worked with, remarked. Have you ever thought about coming back? Ross smiled, grateful for the compliment, but shook his head. No, my life is here now, with Grant. 
It's different, but it's where I want to be. And so, Ross managed to give Grant a decent life. They didn't have grand luxuries, vacations were local camping trips instead of exotic resorts, and dining out was a rare event. But Ross made sure that nothing was lacking for his son. He was there for every soccer game, every school performance, and every night to read a bedtime story. You're the best dad in the world, Grant said one night as Ross tucked him into bed. Ross kissed his son's forehead and turned off the light. And you, my son, are the reason I do it all. As he left the room and closed the door, Ross felt a wave of gratitude. Yes, he had made sacrifices, but each one of them was worth it for the smile on his son's face. And as he headed to his own bed, tired but content, Ross knew he would do it all over again in a heartbeat. Ross Thompson sat at his dining table, looking at a piece of paper that filled him with a mix of concern and frustration. It was a progress report for Grant, sent by his teachers, and the words classroom difficulties and attention issues were underlined. Is there a problem, Dad? Grant asked, noticing the serious expression on Ross's face. Ross glanced at his son and forced a smile. No, it's okay. I'm just thinking about some things. But the truth was that Ross knew it was time for a medical appointment for Grant, not just with a doctor who changed glasses at every visit, but with a more specialized physician who could find the root of Grant's problem. And he knew that this would be expensive. I can't ignore this, Ross muttered to himself, making a difficult decision. He picked up his phone and scrolled to a contact he hadn't used in years, Jane. Am I doing the right thing? He wondered, hesitating before making the call. Finally, he pressed the dial button. The phone rang several times before being answered. Hello, Jane, it's me, Ross, he said, his voice trembling. There was a pause on the other end of the line. Ross, what's going on? Why are you calling me after so long? Ross took a deep breath. It's about Grant. He's having vision problems and needs a medical appointment. I... I was wondering if we could use your health insurance. I know you have a successful career. Jane interrupted. Ross, you've never asked me for anything before, and this is about Grant, our son. Of course, you can use my insurance. Ross felt like a weight had been lifted from his shoulders. Thank you, Jane. It means a lot to me and to Grant. In fact, Jane continued, I'm in town for a few days for a job. I can give you both a ride to the appointment if you want. Ross was surprised. You would do that? It's the least I can do, Jane replied, a note of regret in her voice. And so, with an unexpected phone call and an imminent reunion, Ross felt that maybe, just maybe, there was a chance for healing, not only for Grant's eyes, but also for the wounds of the past that still haunted their fractured family. The atmosphere in the medical office was sterile and professional, with a faint scent of disinfectant in the air. Ross, Jane, and Grant were led to the examination room by Sarah, the nurse. She had a friendly smile, but her eyes reflected the seriousness of her work. Let's start with some basic vision tests, Grant said. Dr. Miller, an experienced ophthalmologist with a kind demeanor, positioned Grant in front of a Snellen chart and began the examination. As Grant struggled to read the smaller letters, Ross watched Jane. She seemed nervous, restless. When Dr. Miller began to examine Grant's eyes with an ophthalmoscope, Jane's expression changed to something Ross couldn't decipher. It was a mixture of shock and guilt. Interesting, Dr. Miller murmured, looking at Sarah's notes before turning to Ross and Jane. Grant's vision problem is not the result of excessive screen time, as many parents often suspect. In fact, we're dealing with a genetic defect in the cornea. Ross felt like the ground had been pulled from under his feet. A genetic defect? Is that serious? Jane, who had been silent until then, finally spoke, her voice trembling. This kind of issue runs in my family. Ross looked at her, stunned. What? 
Why didn't you ever tell me this before? Jane avoided Ross's gaze, her face pale. My mother and some of my uncles had similar vision problems, but my siblings and I escaped it, so I thought. I thought Grant would too. You thought? This is something I should have known, Jane. This is about our child's health. Ross was struggling to control his anger and frustration. Jane looked at Grant, who was sitting in the examination chair, clearly confused and a little frightened. I know I messed up, Jane said, tears welling up in her eyes. I should have shared this with you, and I'll do whatever it takes to make it right. Dr. Miller, sensing the tension in the room, intervened. The good news is that there are treatments and surgical interventions that can help in cases like this, but it's crucial that we start treatment as soon as possible. Ross nodded, still digesting the magnitude of Jane's revelation. Let's do it. Let's do whatever it takes to help our son. Jane was sitting in a corner of the medical office, her eyes fixed on the floor. The revelation about Grant's corneal genetic defect had hit her like a punch in the gut. She felt as if every wrong decision she had ever made was coming back to haunt her. Dr. Miller, sensing Jane's discomfort, decided to broach the next topic with care. Medicine has advanced significantly in recent years. There's a surgery that can correct Grant's corneal defect. However, I must warn you that it's an expensive procedure. Ross looked at the doctor and then at Jane. How expensive are we talking about? We're looking at around $50,000, including all associated costs, Dr. Miller replied. Ross felt his heart sink. He knew he didn't have that kind of money. He was about to express his concern when Jane, who had been silent until then, spoke up. I will pay for the surgery, she said, her voice firm but laden with emotion. Ross looked at her, surprised. Jane, you don't have to. Yes, I do, she interrupted him. I need to, Ross. Not just because I can, but because I must. I failed Grant in so many ways, this is the least I can do to start making it right. Ross felt a mixture of relief and resentment. This doesn't erase the past, Jane, I know. She replied, tears welling up in her eyes, but maybe it can be a start to a better future for Grant, and maybe, just maybe, I can begin to fix things between us. Jane then turned to Dr. Miller. Please schedule the surgery as soon as possible and send me all the information and paperwork I need to fill out. Dr. Miller nodded, clearly impressed by Jane's determination. I'll take care of that immediately. Jane then looked at Grant, who had been watching the conversation with curious and slightly confused eyes. And I'd like to start visiting Grant regularly if it's okay with you, Ross. Ross looked at his son and then at Jane. He saw, perhaps for the first time, a glimpse of genuine concern and regret in her eyes. Okay, he finally said, for Grant. And so, amid medical diagnoses and painful revelations, a mother tried to redeem herself in the eyes of her son and her former partner. It was a long and uncertain path, but it was a start, and sometimes, a beginning is all we need to change the course of our lives. The day of the surgery had arrived, and the hospital was buzzing with the typical activity of medical procedures. Ross and Jane were in the waiting room, each lost in their own thoughts while Grant was in the operating room. The air was filled with a mix of hope and nervousness. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Dr. Miller appeared. The surgery was a success, he announced, a relieved smile on his face. Ross felt as if a huge weight had been lifted from his shoulders. Thank you, doctor. This means the world to us. Jane, who had been sitting in silence, finally let out a breath she seemed to have been holding. Can I see him? Of course, he's in the recovery room. I'll take you there, Dr. Miller replied. As they entered the recovery room and saw Grant lying in the bed, still groggy from anesthesia but clearly stable, both of them felt a wave of relief and gratitude. Jane approached the bed and gently touched Grant's hand, her eyes filled with unspoken tears. During Grant's weeks of recovery, Jane made sure to be present. 
She helped with the bandages, read stories to him, and spent quality time with the son she had neglected for so many years. Ross watched from a distance, his relationship with Jane still strictly parental, but he couldn't deny the positive change in Grant. Are you enjoying your mom's visits? Ross asked Grant one afternoon as they sat on the living room couch. Grant looked at his dad, his eyes now much clearer and focused thanks to the surgery. Yeah, she's cool. She told me about the places she visited and the photos she took. It's like an adventure book, but real. Ross smiled, feeling a twinge of happiness for his son. That's great, son. It's nice to have your mom around, isn't it? Yeah, it is, Grant replied, a shy smile forming on his face. Jane, who had just entered the room carrying a tray of snacks, overheard the conversation and felt her heart swell with an emotion she hadn't felt in a long time, hope. I brought some cookies and juice, she announced, placing the tray on the coffee table. Grant looked at her and smiled. Thanks, Mom. Jane felt the words warm her soul. You're welcome, sweetheart. And so, amid homemade cookies and simple conversations, a family began to reconnect. While the relationship between Ross and Jane remained solely focused on their roles as parents, the bond between mother and son began to flourish. It was a new beginning, fragile and uncertain, but full of possibilities, and sometimes, that's all a family needs to start healing its wounds. Thank you for joining us today on Deep Stories. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video.